Hi, I'm Bruce Newman of Newman Restorations and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to build a violin pipe and this one in particular will be um, a G violin pipe, at least it will speak at G uh, from a Wurlitzer 157 band organ. As we know, Wurlitzer often stamped all kinds of different note names on the pipes, but this one will speak at a G. So I've got the pieces already cut out here. You might want to come a little bit closer. Um, this piece right here forms the back of the pipe. These two pieces here will form the two sides. This piece here is the front. And then I use a two-piece block. So there's the block right there, and here's the cap. So I've got a few markings on the pipe. This is the back of the pipe. I've marked an inch and three quarters, and that designates where the block goes. On the sides, I've marked here and here. This is to help me route the slots for the tuning slide. This is the front of the pipe. This mark here is the main bevel from the mouth, the top of the mouth up. And then on the back, I've marked the length of the tuning slot then I found the center of the piece of wood and then marked the width of the tuning slot. And once again, that's done on the back of the pipe, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's start by routing out the um, slots for the tuning slide. So we'll walk over here to the router table. And you'll notice that I've marked the pipe basically in a mirror image with two lines so that I can see how, how deep to make the cut. So now we end up with the two side pieces with a small notch cut out that gives room for the tuning slide to go up and down. We'll just clean that up ever so slightly with some sandpaper. And the sides are now ready. So let's move on to the front of the pipe. We'll cut the bevel once again, I've marked the bevel height. I'm holding it upside down here. And then I've marked on the side the angle of the bevel so I can see that as I'm cutting. So for this operation, we move the table saw blade all the way up. And I've got a little jig right here that's just a block of wood that's been squared off so that it holds my front perpendicular. And I just want to graze along that line so that my saw cut ends a little bit below where I want the bevel to be. And then the rest of it, I'll finish off over here. So I've sanded the bevel, I've gone down to my line, and I have almost a knife edge. I'll go ahead and sharpen that. Got my sandpaper on a piece of plate glass here. So I'll sand the back a little bit. And then just take a couple light swipes until I've got just a very sharp edge. Now let's go back to the table saw and we'll cut the um, tuning slot. 
So for the tuning slot, we want the blade coming up, coming up about three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> Once again, this is the back of the front of the pipe. So here's the part with the bevel. Now here's the back side. You might want to come over to the other side so you can see a little bit better. Why don't you come to this side of me? There we go. All right, so I'm going to line up the edge of the saw blade with that mark here that is the um, edge of the tuning slot. blade we can just clean up that tuning slot a little bit. Now we've got our front with the tuning slot. All right so let's go ahead and glue this pipe up. I start by gluing the, um, the back the block pieces and the side pieces. First step is to glue the block in. I line that right up with my pencil line. Notice the grain is running vertically. Okay. I'm putting glue on the bottom of each side piece. I run my finger along the edge, the inner edge, to sort of squeegee off a little bit of that glue so it doesn't squeeze into the body of the pipe. Same thing, squeegee off a little bit of that glue. Line everything up here. Then I lightly clamp the sides to the block. Clamp it enough or tighten it enough to hold the clamp up so it doesn't fall while I push the parts down and make sure they're all snug against the bottom. And I tighten it a little bit more. I've got these two flat boards that I use for clamping, it distributes the pressure from the clamp. 
evenly and make sure we get a, a good joint. I scrape off any glue that has squeezed out above the top of the block here. Okay, we'll put this board on the top and go on over to the clamp. Tighten the two ends reasonably, but not, you know, squeezing it really tight quite yet. I do the same thing with these clamps in the middle. And I squeeze the sides to make sure that they're touching my spacer block. Okay, we'll let that set up for about 30 minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the glue has dried. We'll unclamp this and glue on the front. So there we have the glued up pipe body. I just give the front a couple of licks. To make sure everything's completely smooth and all the same height there. Now we'll take it over to the bench and glue the front on. So band organ pipes typically operate around eight or nine inches of pressure, so they have a slightly higher cut up than pipes that operate at lower pressures. So in this case, case it's about a three to one, roughly. So I take my proportional dividers, measure out the width of the inside of the pipe, and then transfer the Dimension right there with just a pencil mark for now. <clears throat> and I run a small bead of glue down each side right to that pencil mark. <clears throat> you want to use just barely enough glue. Of course, especially up here where you've got the notch out for the tuning slide. Run my finger along the inside to remove any excess glue that's close to the inside of the pipe. That way we won't have glue squeezing out into the pipe. And now we set the front on, right even with our pencil mark. Take our dividers and just double check. Here's where we can move the front up and down ever so slightly while the glue is still wet to get 
it exactly where we want it. Hold that down for just a little bit to give the glue a minute to grab on. And then we'll clamp it up and let it dry. Okay, so we've taken the pipe out of the clamps. Now the front is glued on. I've marked the center of the bottom so that we can drill our hole for the pipe toe. So that's what we'll do next. You've noticed I've trimmed this flush so that it's nice and even. And I've trimmed the top and there you can clearly see the little notches for the tuning slide to go up and down in there. All right, so I've got a jig here that helps hold the pipe um, perpendicular so I can go ahead and drill it. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and file the windway. So to do that, we'll get our dial caliper zeroed out. There we go. We want the windway to be about 15 thousandths of an inch deep. So then I use my course file to get started. I try to hold the file parallel with the chamfer right here. Stop periodically just to double check. So we're about 12 thousandths. And about 10 thousandths. So now we'll switch to our finer file. doesn't take much to make a difference, so we check fairly often. So that's about 12. That's also a little bit over 12, so we've got just a little bit more to go. Okay, we're just over 14 on that side. About 13 on that side, so we're almost there. should just about do it. There we are, 15. And 15, right on. Now it's good to do a quick eyeball check. You can place the cap on there and then just view the windway there just to make sure that it's, you know, parallel and um, evenly filed. All right, so with that done, the next step is to seal the interior of the pipe. So for smaller pipes like this, I just fill them up completely with a mixture of um, 
liquid hide glue that's been thinned one to one with water. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape over the mouth here to try and keep some of the sizing solution from running out. And then I'll just pour it in the top here. This can be a messy job, so I always put plastic down. Oh, there we go. And just sort of rotate it as it's spilling back out, and that gets the inside well coated. All right, so we'll let that drip a little bit while we remove the tape. Okay. So with the excess that invariably spills, I'm going to coat just the chamfer. That glue will get into those fibers and strengthen it. You can see the, the upper part of the mouth is so thin that um, the glue that has soaked in has made it almost translucent there. So we're going to size the part where the block gets glued on. The whole point here is to keep moisture from a lot getting into the wood and thereby it'll be more stable because stable it won't be able to swell and contract. Get the end grain on the bottom there. And also we'll size the hole for the toe. Okay, that's ready to dry then. One last step that we do though is make sure that no glue is clogging our tuning slide. So I've got a piece of metal here that's just the right thickness that I can slide up in there until I hit the bottom of the slot. And that just clears out any glue that might have gotten in there. So we'll put that to dry over here. And while that's drying, I'm going to take some orange shellac. I'm going to put two coats of shellac on the top of the cap. And that way, after I glue it on, I don't have to worry about shellacking this part and running the risk of getting shellac down in the mouth. I also put shellac just where the glue is not going to go, just to seal the inside of the cap. And then we'll let that dry a little and then put a second coat on there and then the cap will be ready to glue on once the sizing is all dry. Okay, so at this point, um, I've glued the cap on after double checking my windway, and uh, I filed it just a little bit more. It had swollen ever so slightly from being sized with the, the glue size. So I filed that back down, then I take a, a thick leaded carpenter's pencil and just sort of burnish the inside in that helps decrease any resistance to airflow. There's the shellac top of the cap there. Uh, then I ran it on the planer or the joiner a couple of times on the, the edges just to smooth those and then I hand sanded the rest. So it is now ready to be shellac. So I've got a little tapered piece of wood here that I insert into the toe hole and that gives me a handle to grasp while I'm doing the shellacking. All right. Nice 
start with the back and then work my way to the front. Shellac is pretty forgiving, but it does have its peculiarities, and one of them is you have to work pretty fast, otherwise it will dry and get kind of globby on you. And this new wood is pretty porous, and so it requires quite a bit of shellac to be put on it. Now notice how I'm brushing toward the mouth from the center of the side to avoid any accumulation of shellac on the front of the pipe that could then enter the mouth. to the upper lip there. kind of smoothing here. And then get the front. Okay, so that is now ready to put on the rack over here, so we'll let that dry. Once it's dry, we'll give it another coat. Okay, let's move on to making a toe for the pipe. So I use a metal lathe for that because it needs to be very accurate. Um, typically, I buy uh, dowels made of poplar, but uh, birch and maple also work really well. So obviously, the first thing we have to do is chuck it up. on my glasses might help. The first mark is the shoulder of the toe. That's usually about a half inch. And then the next mark is roughly the length of the tapered portion of the toe. So I make a rough cut first to form the shank. I hone in on my final dimension. And I back up the cutter. And now make the angle taper. opening to reduce any kind of air turbulence. So when we're done,
we have something that looks like that. So the next step is to then trim uh, this waste part off, which I have done already on this piece. So then we check this back in. Just gently, we don't have to screw that part down very tightly because we're just going to be doing some fairly light work to it. So the next step then is to uh, bevel this opening on the bottom and then sand it smooth. And now we have a toe that's ready for drilling. So we're in the final stretch here. We have our pipe that's been coated with two coats of shellac. I've pre-drilled for the frame here in the cap. I've made the tuning slide out of coke tin and we'll go ahead and slide that in place. And then I've drilled the hole in the toe. Here you see the larger clearance hole. And then down toward the bottom, the smaller hole that actually regulates the airflow into the toe of the pipe. So we'll go ahead and install the frame. I have pre-bent it to the proper angle. And the first step is to make sure that the frame is parallel to the top of the cap. So I rest the edge of the frame on the cap and then just slightly bend it until my pilot holes line up with the slots in the frame. Then I use a shorter screw for the bottom since it gets screwed in all the way. I prefer using washers under the screw heads because you get a more even regulation that way. Some screw heads have small protrusions where they've cut the uh, slot in and that can uh, make unevenness when you're trying to regulate the frame. So I put a washer on there and that helps considerably. So I want to adjust it so the frame is about a sixteenth of an inch out from the pipe. And then also, and here we have to adjust it so that it's parallel to the front of the pipe as well. So it needs a little bending. Okay, that looks good. So we'll go to about a sixteenth away from the pipe and a sixteenth above the top of the cap. That should be pretty close. Get the toe in. We'll just give it a quick test. Not bad. So let's go over to the uh, voicing table and we'll tune it and put the final touches on it. Okay, here at the voicing table, we have our source of wind set at eight inches. And we've got the tuner here set up. So it's set for the note we're making, G. And this one will tune to A435. So it's a little flat. First I get it more or less in tune and then I work on getting the tone I want by adjusting the frame up and down or in and out. Okay. 
There's usually a sweet spot. Going too far cuts the, um, the note down so it doesn't speak. Going too far out makes the note speak its octave. And there's that little sweet spot right in there where it's got that nice stringy tone and good volume. So we're still a little flat now after adjusting the frame. Tune. We're going to play with the frame just a little bit more. And we have a pipe.